Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football. Let's have no two ways about this. If Everton are given a 12-point deduction, they are facing relegation to the Championship. Can Everton put up with that? Can Everton survive that with a new stadium? Do Everton deserve that when there are other clubs like Man City with 115 charges against them and the Premier League are looking to give Everton a 12-point deduction for their FFP financial fair play uh, um, breaches. Well, look, I think the sensationalist argument here is to say things such as it's not fair. How are Man City not getting their charges put up against them and, and, and the sanctions there and the Premier League are going after Everton? It's an easy hit. But overarching all of this, you have to say if any team has breached those rules and Everton apparently have by a considerable amount of money, then... If we're going to have it, and many people want it, you know, many people want it. If you don't have financial fair play, Newcastle, the richest club in the world, just buy everything they want. So to ridicule financial fair play because it's got no teeth is absolutely fine. To say it shouldn't be in play is absolutely scandalous. Because what would happen then is clubs would be able to go into huge debt and, and over borrow. And you'd get things like what happened with Leeds. Or you'll get clubs like Man City... PSG, Newcastle, who've just got the deepest pockets, who can just buy everybody and basically say, um, Erling Haaland, I know you play for Man City, but we'll give you six billion a week. You've got to have some sort of final financial restrictions in, in football. And if you have financial restrictions in football, they've got to have teeth. So therefore, if Everton have breached financial fair play, then there should be punishment. And punishment should not be a fine, because if you're going to give them a fine... They've breached some of these breaches are tens, a hundred millions of pounds. So you can't give them a you can't give them a fine like that. It's not proportionate. So how do you hurt a football team? Well, you relegate them, you give them a transfer ban, or you give them a points deduction. So I'm not against Everton getting a ban, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But it does leave that sensationalist response that we've seen from Carragher. I spoke about it on the watch along last night. I've seen a lot of other people saying. Oh, well, look at Everton getting a 12-point ban and yet Man City have got 115 charges. What I would say in relation to investigation, you know, pragmatically and calm, it's easier to investigate one breach than it is 115. And maybe, maybe the Premier League are looking at Man City's 115 breaches and maybe 10 of them, they think, right here, right now, we've got them, we could give them a ban, but they've still got another 105 to work through. So... I, I, maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe, as I suspect, Man City aren't even going to get done. And if they don't get done, they can't get fined. And if they can't get, if they don't get, they can't get points deductions. I've got no confidence that the Premier League have got the capability to defeat um, Manchester City, who will have the best lawyers anyway. Um, it looks like Everton are pretty much bang to rights in the sense that they've gone over their limits. Over, I think it's over more than one year by quite a considerable amount. And a 12-point deduction is what the Premier League are pushing for. The interesting thing is, bringing it back to Everton before we go to Man City, and get your comments in below, because a lot of people have different opinions on this. I think the thing I want to know from you in the comments is, one, do you agree with a points deduction? And two, um, do you think there is a disparity on how Everton are being treated and how the Man City case has just gone very, very quiet? Let's not forget, we're, we're 18 months, I think, since the big story about Man City broke. I think it was March the season before last. In that time, they've won the league twice. They've won, a, they've won a treble. And we were meant to, well, the footballing world was meant to celebrate Man City's treble as something remarkable. And yet, we've been waiting for the result of the 115 charges for 18 months. I sometimes fear as a football fan, we're treated like idiots because, you know, 18 months ago, you get this story, 115 charges over, you know, just under 10 years. So Man City's foundations built on potential breaches. But then, oh, let's leave that for a bit. They've won the treble. Everyone should celebrate. It's good for football. They've won the treble. And you're like, but there's a story. They've got 115 charges over a number of years where they basically built their strong foundations. And we're meant to forget what you told us about that because the investi investigation is still going on um, and celebrate a treble that's built on breaches potentially it's a weird scenario and I think my, my my issue with with the Man City thing is that this is just gonna they said it was going to take a long time and it's taking too long and the integrity of the game is is under under scrutiny but it's like anything three or four weeks ago Liverpool got robbed of a win 
three points that should be on the Premier League table. Everyone's forgotten about it. Two weeks ago, Arsenal should have been playing against Man City with 10 men for most of the game. Been forgotten about because Arsenal managed to win the game anyway. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly in football that, you know, it's, uh, what's massive news today is not such big news in a couple of weeks. And that certainly happened with the 115 charge with Man City. In fact, it's not an ongoing investigation. As I recall, they've been charged. So this is really about going to court and having a result of that, whether either it's not guilty or guilty. And uh, when is this going to happen? And I think that's the frustrating thing. This is high-end competitive sport. And there is a club that is the best club in the world that is continuing to win titles with these charges over them. I think for their sake, it needs resolving quickly. Um, but there doesn't seem to be the ability to do that. And it undermines the integrity of the sport. Because if Man City did get found guilty and, let's say, get relegated to the championship, then everyone's going to say, well, that treble was won because you were slow in moving from charges to, to, to um, fines or whatever. So, yeah, I get that. It's a very slow process. And in the meantime, they're still winning titles. Um, it needs to get resolved quicker, but it was always going to... And they may never get resolved. And if they don't get, if they don't get found guilty, then in the eyes of the law, they're not guilty. So, you know, you've got, you've got to accept that. But with Everton, going back to Everton, if this is what the Premier League are pushing for, 12 points... Um, I've got to say, and I'd say the same if it was Manchester United, if you've done the crime, then there has to be a punishment. And, and I'm talking about football here because you're talking about clubs that could be spending, you know, 100 million quid or 200 million quid that they shouldn't be spending, that everyone else isn't spending because they're adhering to the rules. So really, you're cheating. You are. You're cheating. And if you get found out, you, you're going to get a ban. Tonali is going to get a 10 month ban. For gambling. Ivan Tony got a seven month ban for gambling. Are Everton not gambling by what they've done? 12 points? You know, I, I think, to be honest, if it's. It could, be a, it could be a really good thing. It could be a deterrent. We've seen it in other leagues, we've seen it in the Championship. I get. I really do get the argument that the Man City thing is frustrating because it's it's been going on for so long and we need a result of it and they're winning while whilst it's going on. But from Everton's point of view, I would say if I was Everton, the sooner you get that 12-point ban, the better. That 12-point that deduction, the better. Because you, you, need, you don't want to be getting it in April. You don't want to be doing it. If you know you've got it now, you've got to catch. I think if Everton got that 12-point deduction now, they're on minus five. Puts them about six points off bottom and puts them about 10 seven, eight, nine points off safety. They could overcome that. They can do, but they need to know that early. Um, so if I was Everton, I'd be pushing to get that ASAP. But as I said, last season, you take Everton's 36 points and you take 12 off it. That puts them on 24 points, a point behind Southampton who were bottom and relegated with Leeds and Southampton. So Everton would probably need to be around, I would say this season, they would need to get about 45 points to be safe with a 12-point deduction. I think 33 will keep you safe this year. I don't think Burnley um, and Luton and Sheffield United are going to get more than 30 points this year. I just can't see it. So, actually, after the anger and frustration of Everton fans, I would be, this is the season to take it. I think the bottom three this season are going to go really low. Not Derby County low, but they're going to go low. So, if you're going to get a 12-point deduction and try and stay in the Premier League... I think this is the year to take it. Um, and look, if Everton stay up and they get a 12-point deduction, everybody wins because Everton don't get relegated because of it and the Premier League has teeth with FFP at last. So I think it could be a good thing. You know, I know that's anti what people think, but I think in a calmness, if they've done the crime, give them the punishment. I think the punishment always should be points deduction or a transfer ban because it's the only way to hurt a football club. Um, and... Yeah, I'm not against it. I just hope it doesn't relegate Everton because that's always a sad thing when a point, when a team gets relegated because of a points deduction because it's like a double whammy, isn't it? You get points deducted in the season you're in, which messes up that season. Then you get relegated, which messes up the next season. So it's almost like a two-year thing, isn't it? But I don't want to see Everton get relegated, but I think this is the season to take it if you're going to take it. I certainly wouldn't be challenging it and thinking, oh, because well, if you lose, you might get it next year and the Premier League might be stronger down the bottom. So I'd take it this year. But I take on board the Man City thing, but that's just locked up with with expensive lawyers and it will be. And there'll be appeals and all sorts. Like that Man City one is so big, it's going to take fucking years. And that's, that's the frustrating thing. 
Man City are accused of more things of Everton, which is going to take longer to, to, to get to an outcome. Everton have done less, but it's bang, 12-point thing. But as I said, with investigations, the bigger the, the bigger the case, the longer it takes. And maybe Everton is just easier to deal with. But get your comments in below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'll speak to you on the next one.